just the right amount of sleep, cranking down some of this energy stuff, trashing my body. Yeah, just just trashing my body. You know, just being like, I just need to do this, you know? And like, dude, I've done road walking when my legs are like dead, but I'm like, dude, these calf sleeves, calf sleeves, guys, listen, trekking pole, and you want to know the secret? Trekking poles and compression calf socks are huge. The ones that I have are from Amazon. They cost like 20 bucks, the, the calf sleeves, and they're called Run Forever. You literally could run forever. Like your legs just like one time, my legs were just so sore. I slipped these guys on. I felt fresh. It was amazing. So I wore them the entire time because of the trekking poles. My knees, they're just like right now, my knees are just very tight. I didn't have any excruciating knee pain on this entire thing. Um, my, my muscles never got sore. Um, it was all because of the way that I, I, I treated them and the recoveries. Well, I also had these really amazing herbal supplements called sport by Manatech is what the company's called. So it's Manatech and these sport things I was actually introduced to just a couple weeks ago. Um, that mixed with heavy doses of ibuprofen. Vitamin um, I to the rescue. Here you go. Um, and so did you ever get that, that, um, uh, what do you call it? That, that, hold on. I'm going to think of it. Uh, I am blanking on the word right now. The, uh, dehydrated feel, dehydrated was the word. That dehydrated feeling when you like step up and your quad just like tightens up because you don't have enough there were water or anything like no, that. No, I never got that. Okay, good. I don't know if I've ever experienced that. Oh. Um, but I, there were a couple times where like my left quad specifically, I was getting a little bit of a cramp, yeah. but when I started going uphill, it would go away. Okay. It was only going downhill. I'd get a little bit of Weird. cramps. So surprisingly, I drank a little. My then. water sitch on this was great. Good. There were so many spots to refill. Well, sure. um, there was only one time that I was actually freaking out. It was going up to Algonquin. And I asked people coming down. I actually saw people earlier that day going up Algonquin. And they said, wait, you're going up again? <laughs> and it's like, kind of. <laughs> yeah. um, I saw the same girl. I passed going. I was going towards tabletop. And I passed her. And then as I was going down tabletop, I passed her coming up and then I went up Phelps and then went down and passed her coming up and we talked for a minute. She, you know, she said, Hey, I've actually passed you a few times in the past before. I know what you're doing. Awesome. Keep with the good work. And then I went did street and I, and then I went up the max. And as I was going up, Mm -hmm. she was coming down. And she's like, yeah, you know, she was telling me what she did. I'm like, Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Like, congratulations. And, um, it's like, yeah, I'm kind of going up this now. <laughs> and I told yeah. her what I had to do. And she's like, oh, still? I'm like, yeah, you know. So um, I, I don't even know what that tangent was. Um, anyway, so back to this the last day. Three in the morning, um, basically, like maybe it's two or three hours of sleep, just enough. Because once I finally get down this, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do a quick send up Rocky Giant and Rocky mm-hmm. Big Ridge, okay? It takes like you know, like two hours to get yeah, up the Giant. Not terrible. You know, just, you know, it's like nothing that I would have done – the last 40 peaks behind me. Uh, so, uh, 39 actually. And, you know, so I was going to send it up and there's one mile before the summit of giant, there's an intersection to roaring brook falls. Uh, so one mile before the summit is where I was going to drop pack, take my day pack out, hit up the summit of giant, get over to Rocky peak Ridge. So round trip right there should have been an hour and a half, maybe two hours max, you know, just, Hit that and come back from my pack. Head back down the Roaring Brook Falls Trail. Get over to the the road. Uh, hike seventy three all the way up to Keene Valley, and then so that was a straight or is it Keene seventy three? Listen, it's I it's can Keen never Valley. remember. Nothing is in Keene. Okay, Keene's the first town Keen's with the, Keen Marcy has Stewart's. But nothing, okay. nothing is in Keene. is the first one that you hit going back. Okay, yes. okay. So all Keen the trailheads are after Keene Valley has yes. New Mark Diner. Maybe something might technically be Keene, but like everything is, for lack of a better word, Bird, it's yeah, Keene yeah. Valley. So, you know, it's like, a f- I think it's f- four and a half miles. Okay, from- just right along Route 73. Right, so it's one and a half miles of road walking from when you, or oh, sorry, it's... From the Roaring Brook um, Trail it, head it, it to... Was, it was 45 minutes, garden. I calculated it because I walked part of it. Um, I, it was 45 minutes from... Uh, the Boquette Forks to the Ridge Trail up Giant. Okay. 45 minutes on there. And then I think it was an hour and 15 minutes walking from the Roaring Brook Trailhead uh, to where you turn to go to the garden. Yeah, sure. And so and that's, that's still you, a long walk from there to the garden. Yeah, but it's it's easy flat road walking. Yeah, I know. You know? I mean, so it's, it's all like You're road keeping walking, a three but... and a half mile an hour pace, right? Uh, but this day I think was supposed to be around a 50 mile day. 
50? 50. 50. 0 Oh, due to all the road walk right. and stuff. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, um, and sense. so then I was just going to go to the garden and start going up, you know, the big slide via the brothers. And I mean, that walk into the garden would have been relentless, but it would have been daytime. Wouldn't have been scary. Um, would have seen all the people in there kind of like trying to find parking and couldn't. Mm-hmm. And so I'd kind of be going up giant and people would be like, dude, should this guy be, is he okay? <laughs> you know, I was, I was kind of wanted to ask people as I was going up Algonquin, Hey, do I look like hell? <laughs> and you know, I wanted to just say that to people. Cause I'm like, I could tell people are saying to about this guy, yo, he's going up now. He does not look ready. <laughs> yeah. He looks um, terrible. <laughs> he looks like this is his first high peak. <laughs> it feels like it. Um, minus the blood. So, um, oh, by the way, something I didn't mention, one thing that really got to me, these bushwhacks. So it was nine hours of bushwhacking in the first 36 hours. Mm -hmm. When you're brushing up against sharp pine trees and branches for that long, my arms got so sensitive. And the certain pine trees back there where the bristle, the needles are just so sharp. My arms were on fire. I would just be like... It's just like trying to move like three feet through some of the stuff. It was awful. Like when I said like torture, it's actually torture, not just physical and mental. Well, I mean, not just mental. Like you like the there's literal pain when mm-hmm. you do a lot of this stuff. My arms are so scratched up in my legs. Um, so I did this bushwhack, the big slide, the porter bushwhack. I plotted it myself to avoid the property line where the original little porter trail is. That's now closed. My goal was to bushwhack from the first brother because there's this amazing slide off of it. Um, and I went and did it the other day, and it took me 32 minutes to go from the first brother um, to the summit of Little Porter. I'm like, that was quicker than if I went back down and took the original trail that's closed. Mm-hmm. Um, so I knew, like, I'll drop pack there, hit big slide, go back, do the bushwhack, uh, get up to Little Porter, and then, which, by the way, it's not closed. You can go from Porter to Little Porter legally. Um, it's just the property line. You cannot touch. That's it. So the trail itself says it might be closed, but it's until you touch the property line, which is where you're not. That's why they close the whole trail. Um, but so it's like I knew I would stay within the legalities of everything as long as I avoid the property line because it's still state land. Um, so Little Porter, and then it's like another 35, 40 minutes up to Porter from there. Um uh, so one hour from big slide, uh, standing on the big slide trail to summit of Porter and then kind of just heading over to cascade, go down cascade and then home stretch, home walk, stretch. walk the road, um, pretty far. I think it's like five miles. Walk the road up till you get the Craigwood golf course, walk on the Craigwood golf course to the mountain bike trails, make sure no one gets mad at you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, walk of those trails um, and eventually emerge on the river road, take river road all the way up to the Connery Pond Trailhead, hike that in the Whiteface Landing and up the Whiteface Trail, and then down Esther and finish at the Atmospheric Research Center. Um, I specifically did not hike Connery Pond, and I still have not hiked Connery Pond to this day because I wanted to, I'm going to save that for when I do this because I want to actually hike something new sure. on that. makes you know? sense. And I think it would be refreshing on the last hike as well. Um, so when I really look back at all this, it's like, yeah, it's really exhausting because those first two days, they're so radically different than the last days. Mm-hmm. It's just what you go through to get everything from the Seward, Santonis, Allen, Cliff, Redfield, those mountains right there, just like that area, that region, it just takes so much out of you. So I'm going to make sure that when I go and do this next time, I do it in a way where when I finish my day, I am more than adequately on schedule. So I think what I'm going to do is like camp at the base of Allen, then hit Allen. And instead of doing that bushwhack to Redfield, I'm actually going to bite the bullet, hike the extra miles up to the float lands through there. And then, you know, you just... Kind of, it's actually pretty quick. Once you hit Flow Lands, it's only like 45 minutes to an hour to get to the base of Redfield and Cliff. So you're basically just going to hike. You're going to hike Allen, come back out. Well, back the trail the it's the trail up to the Flow Lands is it's more than halfway in. Okay. It's like it's like a mile past where you. Oh yeah, I know where it is. It's where that wooden sign is with the arrow that points to Marcy. Yes, just all scraped into yeah, Marcy. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never hiked that, and I really don't want to. Mm-hmm. But it's like. That's what other people have done in the past, and I'm like, oh, that's inefficient. Sure. Why do you do that? But it's like, you know, 
I actually think that's an adequate way to do it. Well, you know, it's um, weighing the pros and cons right. of time and the ratio and it, of even energy if it, spent. Right. And even if that day, what I what I think I might do is like hit Allen and then since I will hopefully be more fresh that day, um, hit Redfield and Cliff. And then um, I think like what I – I might do something like go up and hit gray and skylight and come back down so I can just stop and then go, you know, do cold and tabletop Phelps street nine max Marshall. And then when I get ready to do the next day, I don't have to hit gray and skylight mm-hmm. or, um, if I have enough time for that day, number two, maybe pack up Colden, hit tabletop Phelps and camp right there at Marcy dam for day number two. And then day number three, hit oh shoot see that's the problem that i'm thinking about is because like i the point is to be day packed that day mm-hmm. you know oh yeah but yeah. whatever happens like my goal at the end of the day i would love what would be such a huge advantage is if i can do that main loop and once i get back to feldspar still hit gray skylight marcy oh yeah th- that, that's what it was i was thinking on day two hitting gray and skylight after redfield and cliff just out and back in that real quick the feldspar so that when i do day number three i do that loop day packed and once i get back to feldspar i can grab my stuff and just hit up go into marcy go up marcy and because i did those two other peaks the day before sure over so the that's haystack what I'm, I'm thinking where i could over. save that time and i still think i would consider trying to finish out the dicks range on that day it's either that or I'll camp right at the base of uh, Nipple Top and then crank out Nipple Top dial the Dix range and then just send it and make that the whole last day until I get there. Okay. So whatever it is, I'm still going to – for anyone listening, I might regret saying this, but I'm still going to go to try to get it in the four-day time. Um, so it would be five days of hiking. Okay. It would be an extra day, but if – like. Still would break the record, right? Yeah, yeah. To, um, uh, I know what certain people are going for, and so it would be borderline five days. It would be very close to five full days. That would basically mean finishing at the trailhead at mm-hmm. five in the morning. Yeah. Um. So it's that's very reasonable now that I think about it. Um. Which is basically, uh, thirty six hours longer than what I was originally going for. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say. Hopefully, this is the last time I have to talk about this attempt um you know, i mean so it, it that's really up it, to you a lot the of it last yeah. time you talk about it uh, a lot went into it and yeah it hurt and i think at the end of the day the thing that actually really honestly that sticks with me the most is what happened before alan okay that yeah. that at the end of the day is what uh, guys i'm not kidding you i mean i'm a grown man and i've been hiking in these woods Thinking about hiking in that wilderness again alone at night, like stresses you out. It stresses me out so much. Like that you looked old... visually stressed when you were telling the story. Actually, to me sitting here, I oh, could tell. Dude, I, was I could distra- tell you were like, uncomfortable am, by am, watching you. Like it's just only like I'm getting nighttime vibes right now because it is night when we're recording this. You know, it's just I don't know what it was, man. Well, and I mean, the woods at night are uh, they're an interesting. Place. I really like I like seriously the the other half of me is like. What would happen if I walked to the noise and looked to see what was there? I almost feel like I would see nothing as well. Yeah. I feel like I would look and I would see no creatures. But I could also imagine seeing this massive gorilla looking like creature hold up in a ball looking at me. That would be awful. You know? That would be so awful to run into uh, while you're out there. And then take a flash photo real quick. And then it would go viral. Yeah, but you would ne- that would never be on your brain. Well, Taking it would probably a photo kill me. in that scenario would never be in, in, what, what's going through your head. Dude, be the last oh, thing you do. Oh my gosh, uh, that, that moment is just I can't even. That's for a whole nother episode that I would love to do at some point. But anyways, let's get I told real you all the details. Yeah, no, no, I'm saying I would love to go more in depth in that whole How subject. How about you and I here in the ADK Park? Night vision. People have stories. Let's, let's go it. out there and see. No, I don't want to. I don't want to put myself in that scenario because I know, I know what's out in the woods. I know what's in the woods, and I don't want to come face to face with what I know is in the woods. And yet, 
sometimes before I do a hike in the morning, especially,